But then there is also, you know, the doxa. The what? The doxa. What is that? That is the story, the the formal story oh, that, oh. that you're not allowed to question. I do think it's a problem that some people have this monolithic understanding of the science, including scientists themselves, and uh, we've seen how badly that that served us. I think during during the COVID, uh, during the pandemic, because. It was used, it was weaponized, if you like, the idea of there being the science or a consensus, a model that really explained everything and that there could be, that could never be challenged. That was not the situation of COVID. We had two competing models. So in one model, which is very straightforward, or what we call an SIRS model, which uh, straightforward mathematical, simple compartmental models, um, where people are categorized being either susceptible, infected, recovered. You just have flows between them. Very simple model with some seasonality thrown in would explain the patterns of COVID pretty much anywhere. In that case, what's really driving everything is the buildup of immunity and the loss of immunity and also the se- the fact that transmissibility of the pathogen is uh, depends on se- the season. So just those ingredients alone can explain all of COVID. But of course, those who believed that lockdown um, and social distancing and whatnot were the real drivers of the dynamics, also proposed a model completely, you know, also internally consistent and of equal value, um, saying that, no, the reason why uh, cases declined in the United Kingdom in May 2020 was because we locked down. So how do you tell them apart? Well, you can't until you do an experiment That experiment was done, which is a year later, when these measures were lifted under one model, the one where lockdown worked, you would have seen an explosion of cases. The other model, which is simply explained by the standard traditional models in which immunity plays the main part, you wouldn't see an explosion in cases. So we had to wait to do that experiment to discriminate between these two alternative hypotheses which were of equal value up to that point. So we did have two competing hypotheses. We also had a problem in that there was also an establishment which preferred not to allow one of the hypotheses, in my opinion, the correct one, to to be um, put on the table. It's interesting in your case with COVID, we had a real chance to put it to the test. Right. This is uh, the problem for cosmology is you generally don't have the problem to like you don't have uh, the luxury of being able to create experiments. You're interpreting signs in the sky and you're observing and you're trying to bring those measurements into some framework. In physics, you have repeatable experiments under controlled conditions. Uh, in the case of COVID, we had an experiment that where we were all guinea pigs. But I believe I don't know if you want to state the conclusion from uh, from this experiment. Is there clearly one hypothesis over the other? That would interest me. No, yeah. well, I'm biased, but yes, I, I think that by and large, we did not see the sort of explosion that would go with um, the assumption that lockdowns, as they were um, affected in the UK, for example, that they stopped the spread, that the spread was undoubtedly uh, stopped by the acquisition and loss of immunity and seasonal factors. But is there now, based on what we have seen from that, is there a growing agreement in your community about this is the actual conclusion? Unfortunately not. No. But that's a whole other topic. That's a whole other topic. You're going to say something. Well, but the, the comparative method could also apply. What did other countries do? And when did they close down? When did they reopen? More, most of these European countries reopened much sooner than America, and they did fine. They did not have a huge spike. All right, so that should count as data. The, it, it all does. <laughs> yeah. But then there is also, you know, the doxa. The what? The doxa. What is that? That is the story, the, the formal story oh, that, oh. that you're not allowed to question. Oh, yes. But now we're straying outside science. So let's so It's the politicization of science. Yeah, yeah. It's like the lab leak <laughs> hypothesis. That always seemed like a reasonable hypothesis with the zoonotic hypo- of the origins of COVID. But then it got shut down. You can't talk about that. That's a crazy conspiracy theory. And I never thought it was. 
<laughs> no, it, I don't think it is a crazy theory. At the same time, I personally don't think it was a lab leak, but I think the shutting down of it, I also don't think it came out, sprung out of a bowl of pangolin chop suey in the market, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so I think it came from the wild and it was circulating already for a time. I mean, Again, this, it, the most parsimonious yeah. explanation. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.